Hello everyone, I'm Aaron, a birding naturalist. Welcome back. The ESA is turning 50 years old. What's the ESA? I'm so glad you asked. The ESA is the Endangered Species Act, and this is an act that was signed to law by the U.S. federal government on December 28th, 1973. And it was established for the protection of plants and animals. In particular, it does a couple of things. One, it establishes a list. And this is where we get sort of the terminology of listing a species. So a species can be listed under the Endangered Species Act as threatened or endangered, depending on what its population status is, what threats it's facing, stuff like that. So threatened is sort of the less concerning ranking, but still concerning. And endangered is the, this is bad news, this is very concerning ranking. But for either one, threatened or endangered species, a listed species is protected under this law. And in particular, this law prohibits <clears throat> take of listed species. Take being defined as to harass, harm, pursue, hunt, shoot, wound, kill, trap, capture, or collect, or attempt to engage in any such conduct. So it's a pretty broadly worded protection for species once they are listed under the Endangered Species Act. The Endangered Species Act also does a couple of other things. It authorizes funding for research on what threats these various species are facing and how to fix that, how to reverse those threats. It also authorizes funding for actual actions to reverse population trends, to protect species. And the Endangered Species Act has not been limited to focus exclusively on just the species themselves. It has been extended and has been realized through, you know, use of biology and sort of raising awareness of how the world works. That if you want to protect a species, that's going to require protecting its habitat, its ecosystem that it lives in. And so the Endangered Species Act has been used to protect species, but also the critical habitats and ecosystems on which those species depend and in which those species live. There are about 1,700 species that have been listed on the Endangered Species Act as either uh, threatened or endangered. And over its 50-year history, the Endangered Species Act has proven to be very effective. 99% of the species that have been listed under the Endangered Species Act have in fact avoided extinction. That's a pretty solid track record. So far, only I think about 26 species that were listed have then subsequently gone extinct. So all that funding for the research and the actions to protect species, it's effective. It works. Now, of those 26 species even, many of those were listed kind of under unfortunate circumstances where it was almost too late. There were some species where anyone was only finding a single individual of that species, and then it was listed under the Endangered Species Act. So if you've only got one of something left, there's really nothing that any law is going to do to protect that species from going extinct. So really, even amongst the 26 that have gone extinct, several of those were kind of unavoidable at the point where they were listed. So the, in many ways, the track record is even stronger than it looks from the straight statistics. It makes an argument for listing species kind of earlier, getting those protections in place earlier before you're down to that last one individual. So that there is time to do that research and to put those actions into place and then have it benefit the species in question. So listing has proven to be incredibly effective, incredibly important for the conservation of many, many species. And the Endangered Species Act itself has been a very effective, very powerful law.
And in fact, not only has it proven to be sort of powerful in the sense that we've only lost a few species once they were listed, researchers have actually kind of gone through a few different sort of modeling attempts to think about, well, what might it have been like if the Endangered Species Act hadn't ever come into existence? How many species might very well have gone extinct without this law? And something like an estimated 200 to 300 species probably would have gone extinct without the efforts, without the money, without the protections of the Endangered Species Act. So that's potentially like two or 300 species versus, versus the actual 26 that we've lost. So I think that shows a pretty solid disparity of why we need this law, why it is important, why it is important for it to be strong and maintained. Some critics of the Endangered Species Act say that it is expensive, maybe even too expensive. And to a certain extent, you know what? They got a point. That research and all those projects to implement in order to protect species, they cost money. Some of them can be quite expensive. And there are certain industries that have definitely been impacted by the Endangered Species Act. There are oil and gas mining operations that have been derailed or prevented or prohibited by the Endangered Species Act because of impacts to various species. There are a slew of processes and protections and limitations on the timber harvest industry. When they go into log an area, they have to make all sorts of consignments and protections for various species. And those often cost money. It means things take longer, they're more complicated, cost money. But it's not just that one-sided because the Endangered Species Act also generates quite a bit of money. One form is through what are called ecosystem services. And these are things that the environment does for us. Think bees pollinating our crops, or think birds and bats eating mosquitoes that might otherwise annoy us or even give us diseases. Those services that these animals are doing, pollination, eating insects, those have value. If the bees were not pollinating flowers, we'd have to pay humans to do it maybe? If those insects were not being eaten by those birds and bats, then that would make for a lot more costs for hospitals and healthcare. So in that way, the, environment, the Endangered Species Act has an economic benefit. And there's also lots of other benefits that it has. Ecotourism and protection of environmental, uh, environmentally sensitive areas generates a lot of money in the economy. And there's also the sort of less tangible benefits that we all have of having intact ecosystems around us, of having these species still flying in the air, running on the ground, swimming in the water, growing and living around where we live. We can go and see California condors. We can go see peregrine falcons. We can go see these animals that might very well have gone extinct had it not been for the Endangered Species Act. And it's very hard to put a solid price tag on that, but I think at least the value is high. So I want to wish the Endangered Species Act a very big happy 50th birthday. It is a really powerful law. It is a really important law that we all have on the books. We're very lucky to have it in a lot of ways. And it's very important for us all to keep on working to keep it strong, to keep it robust. So give a little thought to the Endangered Species Act on December 28th on his actual birthday. Thank you very much for the view. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, enjoy the natural world. <laughs>